Well, the day, week, or month, I'm not sure what it is, is finally here. We're ready to get started and start loading to get on the road. But first, there is a ton of construction noise in the neighborhood right now with all the stuff going on. They're tearing down all of the forest, but we've got a pretty cool thing that a lot of RVers have on their rig. We've just never gotten around to getting one up and we've got it stuck on the slide out here. We put the sticker on a few days ago when the slide out was in and it looks pretty good on there. So we just got to go ahead and get some states on there that we visited in the last two years or a couple years really. did a family trip out to all these states, didn't we? Back in 2013. Yeah. You and Austin were, were little, but we didn't add them because we didn't do it as a family of six and we didn't do it in an RV. So these are just the states that we've done in an RV and mainly in this one right here in this travel trailer, uh, with the exception of Nebraska, but we were all six with in a class C and we went out to look at the solar eclipse, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there was a solar eclipse. It got dark out back in 2017. Yep. Uh, a rented class C. We went out, stayed in Lincoln and viewed it and it was awesome. I still got video for that somewhere. I should put that in a, maybe the video. I don't know. It's really cool though uh, back in uh, what four years ago almost now. So yeah. in August of 17. added that one on here so this summer hopefully we can get these knocked out we're going to be in Michigan at some point uh, at least the upper peninsula and then we're going to be definitely doing the Dakotas and we'll see about stuff out here you know this just depends on time and time and money I guess what do you guys think that pretty cool you know the one state that we're going to set on what Hawaii, Hawaii? <laughs> yeah it's really hard uh, to RV out there but you know what uh, someday, that'll probably be the last one, but someday you can fly out there and rent like a, a van and, and do that. And you know what? I got really bad news. You guys probably won't be one. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Maybe the channel will take off and we can do that. Another little project we got going on. Got to get the old weight distribution hitch off. The old Husky is what we had and we're going to be switching over to an equalizer, but we have a little rust issue. Not so much rust, it was a little bit of rust, but mostly the paint chipped where these things had just been kind of chafing on the tongue. So sanded it down and got the handy dandy Rust-Oleum out, kind of shot that just to clean that up a bit. So we'll give her a coat or two and get that hitch on so we can get hitched up. Well, a couple coats of paint on and it looks a whole lot better. Both sides are all nice and black now. We don't have any rust showing, so that'll be nice and ready to go uh, to get the brackets for the equalizer, which I have sitting over here. I also touched up my shank. I'm going to be keeping my old shank because it's a bigger one. It's got more reach, which is really nice if you're trying to get your tailgate down. Super, super important if you're getting one. Got the Husky right here. It's a good setup, but this new equalizer is going to have a lot more sway control options. It's got the four point sway. This was more of just a weight distribution. So worked really well, but I want the sway control because honestly, one ton truck with the size trailer that we're towing, you don't really need it for the weight control. We're doing pretty good uh, for the weight distribution rather. So we're going to go ahead and get things mounted up here. I might not do a whole lot of it tonight, but get her ready to go for tomorrow. While I'm getting the weight distribution hitch set up, the equalizer, the Husky one that we had is not as good of a design. This part, it kind of this bracket hangs over the, kind of just hangs over like that. And the thing that I didn't like about it is you get this like chafing point right here. And then you've got this one bolt that just digs into the frame on the back side. Like it's, there's nothing there. It's just a bolt and it just tears right through the paint. There's little Alex. And it tears right through the paint and then you get everything that starts rusting up. The equalizer, one of the real benefits of it is that you end up just having these two metal brackets that pinch over that and of course they're all painted and everything too they're really nice and you just they're just pinched on there tightened down and then you're hanging 
the, I forget what they call this, kind of the hanger bracket, goes right over that. And of course, then there's uh, some nuts that go on to that. And then your bars just slide across these and then a pin goes in. Of course, we'll show all this. Not really making a video out of this because I really just want to get this set up on here. And I've never done one of these anyway. And it's pretty easy. You just bolt it down the way you go. But I, I love this. So it's something to think about because I, in just one, well, I guess it's been just about two years had a ton of the paint coming off underneath this and I had all kinds of rust starting I mean it was really unbelievable this thing doesn't have any rust anywhere else on it but there was tons of rust forming around that hitch and I didn't realize that it was from the hitch but that's what was doing it so it's going to be really nice to switch this over and I don't see that happening with the equalizer Okay, I could probably go on for hours about the benefits of this hitch, but basically you want to go th between 29 and 32, and I am sitting directly at 31 to the center of the, the ball on the hitch there, so I'm sitting right at 31. That's going to give us a little bit of an advantage because if I go off of center from the old setup, I've got two inches, so I was sitting about 29. About 29 inches, about right here, is where the old one was hanging off of. And they say, of course, the equalizer, that's the minimum. Max is 32. Just to clear all this, I had to go 31. I could have probably made 32 work. But anyway, the farther back you go with this hitch, the better it performs any hitch because you're sliding that that weight distribution back. So it's giving you more, of, more leverage. So um, we're going to actually get another little benefit out of this setup here. This allows you to just have so much more room. Again, I don't want to keep overselling the equalizer, but I mean, I, if you're wondering why the equalizer costs 700 and these are about 300, that's the reason. I mean, you're getting what you pay for. It was one of those deals that it was our first hitch. The RV dealer sold it to us. We didn't really know, you know, what was good, what wasn't. And they said, hey, this will work. And of course we were on a budget. So um, we're not mad that we ended up with this. It worked really good. We're gonna be putting it on the market, probably get $150, $200 for it. And it'll do somebody good, especially if they're just gonna be hanging around regionally. Uh, if you're gonna be on the highway, hitting the interstates, going out west with all that wind, get an equalizer. And today is the winterized day. We're getting all the antifreeze out of the system. Got the uh, got the freshwater tank draining right now. It's a little more complex in our setup because of the fact that, like a lot of the rest of the rig, I've done a lot of upgrades to it. We added in a another 40 gallon tank under the bed. Basically, tore out last year everything in this room. Put in a board that was twice as thick, beefier hinges. Built a new bed frame, and we fit in a. 40 gallon tank with the auxiliary pump behind there that I suppose in a pinch I could probably uh, rig that one up to run the water in the in the camper but um, it'd be a little bit of a pain but we've got that whole setup in there and that way we've extended our fresh water in the in the unit here so we have nice little access underneath the bed here just lifting up the skirt and you can see exactly what your water level is there is a tank actually under, uh, so we've got two freshwater tanks about the same size there. So I gotta get a bunch of water run through these just so that we don't have any of the, the pink stuff in there. And if anybody's wondering if that stuff is toxic, it's not. I think you can actually ingest it. I wouldn't I think you'd get a belly ache, but you can have it in the water. Supposedly it won't hurt you, but I still rinse it really, really good and get it all out of there. Uh, I find it to be kind of slimy and I just hate, I don't like the stuff uh, getting it all over. So I rinse everything really good, get all the tanks cleaned out, get the lines cleaned out, drains cleaned out and everything ready to go. Even though in two days from now, we're supposed to be down to 26 and you don't really got to worry about the freezing um, overnight unless if you're getting down to like the low 20s because you got to remember these things build up heat during the day and it takes them a long time to lose enough heat to really freeze things hard. So I don't tend to worry until we're down in the low 20s. So 26 isn't too bad, but we're supposed to be getting snowstorms. Going south, we're supposed to be getting snowstorms if we were to leave uh, today or tomorrow. So not liking that too much. In the middle of April, it's just unbelievable. 
the fact that we've had this kind of weather that we're still talking about, especially south, going down through the middle of the country and there's gonna be snowstorms. So we'll have to see how that all plays out. But if we're in it, we're heating it, I don't worry too much. And I could go on for hours about winterizing and about everything to do with pipes and, and freezing and everything else. I've experienced that in a different uh, travel trailer years ago wasn't mine but we were using it and uh, got down to negative 10 and so I went and tore out all the a lot of the plumbing in this just because I didn't like the way it was from the manufacturer and I redid it did it better use uh, different fittings and uh, got everything like changed with my water heater and I might show that in a minute on how the water routes through there and I did a, a much better bypass kit and put on I've actually got two in line. I'm drawing a blank, but the water can't go backwards. There's one at the water tank, uh, at the hot water heater, and there's another one right at the shower. If you guys ever want to see this stuff or you have questions, seriously, get it in the comments and I'll answer them and maybe make some videos about that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start running all of the different faucets here and we'll watch the old pink stuff come out. I don't know if people in the south do this stuff, but... I do have an air hose because a lot of people say, oh, I'll just blow the lines out. Yep, got one of those and obviously I use it. So the way I usually do it, we usually blow all the lines out. I blow air through the entire system and then I put winterizer. You know, we get down 30, 35, 40 below zero here where I live. So uh, usually we don't get no colder than 20 to 30 below in the winter, but 30 below you'll usually get some. So you just don't mess around because any little amount of water is definitely going to freeze uh, up here where I live. So we blow everything out and then come and go back with RV antifreeze and I only buy the good stuff. It's a buck more for a gallon. And the reason I, I think that's important is because when you get it into systems like your water heater, then it's hard to get 100% of the water out or your fresh water tanks, I got two, or your gray water, your drains, you know, places where water is left behind. It's very important to get it mixed in the, the, the sewer and the toilet. I do the same thing. I dump an entire jug into the sewer because I don't want no freezing. I don't want no seals getting broken. I don't want anything um, getting getting ruined with ice build up and, and cracking. So, you know, you don't want that seal uh, with your drain going out to ever break or become damaged because then you're going to have a leaky black tank, leaky gray tank. That's not going to make it a very fun uh, camping adventure. So I dump uh, one gallon down each the toilet and I, I split the other gallon between all the drains so it really gets down in there and the more concentrated stuff gets into the little bit of residual water that's always left behind and it turns it into a really good pink slush. Common sense is king when it comes to winterizing an RV. It's easy, just get the water out, replace it with RV antifreeze, the good stuff. You'll never have to worry. So I had to go hit the water. We're gonna get this stuff bled out. Okay, let's try it again. Do this very slowly because you do not want to splash this stuff everywhere. You're going to get air bubbles. A lot of air bubbles. And I do still have my bypass on the water heater right now. And I'll leave that till the end. I like to get everything out first of the system. And then when I know I'm running clean water in here, then I'll go back and deal with the water heater because otherwise you just end up pumping more and more into the water heater and it just takes longer and longer. There, it's nice and clean. It takes a few minutes. And this is a key accessory you'll wanna get put on your shower head ASAP. This is one of the biggest factors in stopping that cold burst that you get. I still have the original cheap shower head on. I know a lot of people run the oxygen something or another. I don't know what it's, I can't remember, but it, there's a bunch of popular ones out there. And uh, we're gonna probably switch out as well, but honestly, just putting on a valve right there instead of using this will solve a lot of your problems. But I've got a fitting on the back of the hot right behind the wall here to prevent any cold water from getting back in there, but your shower hose will still fill up, so that's why these are important. Running pretty clean there. 
RVs have lots of hidden storage. This one's under my kid's bed. There's a ton of storage down here, but you got to be careful what you put in here because you've got water and electrical. These pipes are all just extra. It never hurts to carry extra PEX fittings of every sort, everything you can imagine. It never hurts to carry extra pipe. Uh, I've got blue and red uh, in there, you know, not that it has to matter about the color, but if you ever have an issue on the road, and need to make a repair, you're good to go. So we've got extra stuff in here, but I also carry a lot of extra jugs. And this is one of our little RV hacks, isn't it? What do we do with these? With what? All the jugs. Fill them with water? Yeah, we fill them with water. Do we drink out of them? No. <laughs> no. I suppose if you were dying in the desert, you could. We don't always keep these uh, full, but again, this is wasted space down here. So we got empty jugs. But when we're in a lot of situations, we fill these up before leaving. Like if you have to go to a clean out, right? If you're going, if it has a dump station, you don't have full hookups. Yeah. We'll use these jugs to fill. We'll have them pre-filled before we go anywhere. And then when we get to the dump station at the park or whatever, we dump. And then I have her dump these jugs into the uh, into the black into the toilet to run a bunch of fresh water through and it's quick it's so much faster works way quicker than any other method if you sit there and try to you know run your flush and all this you're gonna have a line of people behind you it gets stressful yeah. it never hurts if you have dead space because they weigh nothing they weigh nothing carry a bunch of empty jugs these are a bunch of the rv antifreeze couple water jugs we throw them in here if we ever need to get rid of them we can get rid of them but also look for other space under here this is another compartment that's behind and it's just got some of the plumbing but it's a whole compartment back here underneath our kids bed and what we're going to do there is keep rv antifreeze in there so if we go to texas uh, we've had it in there before but if we go down to texas and they get a big freeze up and everyone's freaking out because their pipes are breaking you might have some dead space in your RV like that that you can fit. We can actually fit six gallon jugs in there of RV antifreeze and it's like totally out of the way, but in an emergency, you have it. So don't be scared to poke around your RV and look for these little hidden compartments because they are everywhere. And I mean, there's some really good ones just on this unit, isn't there? Yeah, yeah. They're hiding everywhere. So uh, anyway, uh, real quick here, I got to do the bleed out of the... Uh, this is the system that I put on because there was a really cheap kind of a not a very good setup that they had and I ended up doing a different setup here with more traditional um, bypass for the hot water and then I also covered my pipes this is something they don't do but this just helps keep that water hot you know going to the shower so I insulated all my pipes and stuff and that's just been really nice these hoses here these are just for bleeding out they're normally just i take these off and i hook up the outside shower but this time of year we're not using it so that's the first thing to get frozen up so i disconnect it and i just let the hoses sit there and these are literally to bleed some antifreeze or water through these these hoses these are actually the old hoses uh just to again put into a jug and get the water out or the antifreeze out so that i don't freeze up those valves right there just simple things like that make your life a million times easier when it comes to cold weather and also getting ready for the camping season so we're gonna go ahead and get this done because i think her arm's getting tired <laughs> a little bit <laughs> This whole video is going to be about the water system and I didn't intend for it, but here's another little RV hack right here. You get these little plugs that come on your little drains for your water heater. Right there, your water heater, you got your hot and your cold, and you also have your, uh, your fresh water. So we have three of them, you might have more on yours, but uh, they have these little plastic caps and these can be lost and whatnot. So I basically, and my, uh, hoses used to hang down pretty long especially the fresh water and I was always worried about it getting hitting something especially when it was cold and snapping it so I trimmed these up a little bit and I put just some some ball valves on there and I've already pretty much drained out my water heater after flushing it but it works so much better just to use those to open and close and when I'm you know in the fall or something when I have to uh, drain these a lot I keep the caps off just because they're a pain having to crawl under there it's much easier to reach under and just hit these 
Uh, but this time of year, because I probably won't do this again until the fall, I'll go ahead and screw these things on there just to keep debris out. And that way that whole thing's a lot easier. You can also see that I did a lot of insulation, both with the foam and insulating the pipes. And again, I did that around the pipes for cold weather because those things were totally exposed before. This is the last part of it here. You can get these on Amazon for a couple bucks and they're basically just made to put on anything that you want to keep kind of warm. So I will, when we're parked, I'll put these up over here. Just like that, you just pull that tight. I wouldn't leave those on there when you're driving, but I put those on there and that way when you're cold weather camping, make sure that those things stay warm and they don't freeze up and bust on you when it gets kind of cold out. This time of year, don't have to worry about it. Like I said, I could probably nerd out on all the water stuff on this thing, but it's good stuff to know, especially when you live in cold climate. So it's day two, three, I don't know, of packing. Week later, <laughs> day 18, yeah, we got it out a month ago. We're still trying to get ready, putting on the equalizer today. And uh, thought I'd point something out on the on the equalizer. Any, any of these hitches really, they all have a torque spec of 430 foot pounds. You're not gonna find anybody with the wrench that goes up that high, no mine doesn't. Unless if you go to like a truck repair shop or something, you know, something that deals with like semis, they probably have one. But those things are like, I don't know, four, five, six hundred dollars. So I actually called my RV dealer who installed my last one and asked them if they had one. And they said, you know, honestly, they said, honestly, we don't use them. We just use a, a, a bar. So we got the 40 inch, three quarter inch bar on there and got a socket to fit and that's pretty much all you need is just a socket that's thin enough to get down in and be able to tighten that and so they just said snug them down and to be honest with you growing up i i know my dad has a torque wrench i never saw it get used you just go tight so we're gonna go ahead and snug this thing down and then we got to get the rest of the hitch done and then maybe we hit the road and it's gonna be hard because uh, the weather here is amazing right now. There's no wind, it's sunny, it's like, it is like dream weather. It's gonna get cool the next couple of days, but it's gonna be dry here in Wisconsin. We're heading south in the middle of spring into a snowstorm. So that's kind of stressful. So we should be able to easily get way more than 430 foot pounds with this. So she's just gonna hold the ball so that it's not just spinning on there, but it honestly wouldn't hurt if it did a little bit. It's not something you gotta do, but I wanna make sure I'm getting tight. Okay, here we go. Duck under the bar. Go over there. I don't want this thing to like slip and then hit you in the head. Okay, here we go. Pretty confident. I'm getting a little bend out of this bar. I'm pretty confident that's gonna give us the 430 right there. That is tight. Yeah, that is tight. Give her a wiggle. Oh, she goes. If you get a ball for the equalizer, it's recommended also that you get one from them because you want to get one short enough because these things are going to swing closed. You don't want anything interfering with that. So pretty important there too. So this is interesting. We're doing our measurement for the equalizer and I already have it coupled because I had to get it out to the street. So I'm taking this measurement first. So we are sitting at bottom of the uh, actual, it's, it's 41 and three quarters. So then we're gonna go ahead and put the jack back down and get the weight off and then we're gonna remeasure. So we're, we actually did B first. So it's tow vehicle coupled, but no weight distribution, which basically means we don't have the bars on, but the trailer is on there. So right, 42 and three quarters. 41 and three quarters. 41 and three quarters. That's why we have her here. So this is not a complete tutorial on how to set up an equalizer. I honestly don't have time for that today. We've got to get on the road before the snowstorm ends up catching us. So it's about a matter of just getting this done right now. So we are sitting at the same spot. We're just about 41 not even quite so we don't even have less than it we get a half an inch i guess that's what you get when you drive a one-ton truck with the ultralight but yeah i'll measure it up again but that that thing doesn't and the funny thing is is the the rear end settled down like i'd say several inches there, you know this truck is built for that and the helper springs weren't even making contact yet or anything like that. So at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's silly, but I cannot imagine not having one. I saw a YouTube video of a, 
of a guy that has a little bit lighter trailer but a three quarter ton and he said they don't use one because they're pretty much right to the line where they don't need one the equalizer is one of those things just like just like a lot of things a lot of tools better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it and I can tell you that this thing right here drops several inches in the back which again this truck is designed for that and it sits up very very you know or many inches higher so it's it's built to have that load on it but at the end of the day for our comfort and the, the handling and everything I like to I like to be able to have something for it to set on here and I definitely want that sway control so that it doesn't matter you know if you had what truck you had you could be pulling this with a with a big rig when the trailer is swaying you know if you got one pivot point you're gonna get this thing back here going you know like a dog's tail wagon so having that sway control is going to be very important to prevent that okay we got this thing finally set up and again if you need a video on this i would recommend just go to equalizer channel they have a new version for 2020 and beyond that's the one you're going to want to watch the most straightforward so that's why again i'm not covering this on my own but a couple of things you're going to definitely want is some big breaker bars this is a 40 inch uh three quarter and this is a half inch uh, half inch drive that is 30 inches long and then i also used this one just so i didn't have to work so hard to make sure that these are 320 foot pounds uh, so 320 foot pounds on those bolts your ball is 430 and then we've still got to tighten these back here we've got it unhooked right now because i was tightening it all down but uh, these are going to get set on here so that they can get flat and once they're back on there again and you can see where it's kind of scuffed there so they were sitting flat we're going to tighten these to 75 and then these inside ones back here get done to 65 and i've pretty much already done that the other day so once that's done i mean it's a pretty easy process just you got to measure so we measured didn't we and what did we come back to or it's funny because we a lot of people get multiple inches on their on their uh fender well we had a half an inch of drop without weight distribution but i'm telling you i would not want to not have that because that drops down everything hangs so much lower without it i just don't know why you wouldn't want to have something on there and uh so we ended up getting ours on there and we so we had to go from 41 and three quarters to 41 and a quarter that was that was our difference so we needed to get to 41 and a half and we're just a smidget under that so that's exactly where you want to be we're just about at 41 and a half so again it is kind of kind of humorous it's humorous though that we didn't have much drop but honestly i thought it would have been more um i know with our suburban we probably it felt like we had about six inches in there um i i don't even know how we towed this i mean we did but you know if you do what you got to do to get going i guess but you got to be safe and we were within our numbers on that truck so i went through the cat scale we were we were within 100 pounds of our payload 100 pounds within the payload so that was kind of scary another little thing that i will definitely say is why i didn't put an equalizer on before is because i theorized i would want in an electric uh jack for this process that you don't need one but you're going to want to set i'd say an entire day aside and get a couple people to help you because we probably went up and down with this about two dozen times already and, and you know we did a lot of adjustments we tried different washer we we really played with this to make sure we had this perfect but this thing here has gotten a workout and the second thing i will say is batteries um you know if you if you only have one battery you know a smaller battery we've got two of the big agms in here um, if you only have one battery, definitely want to be able to plug your, your unit in because if we were, well, we are going to go camping, if we had the one old battery like we did last year, this would, battery would probably be dead. Um, and also make sure your truck charges. Our Suburban did not charge the battery. Uh, this truck, probably because it's more built for towing, does charge the battery. If you, if you don't have the money, don't stress it. Just set more t time aside because you're going to get tired, you know, jacking up and down to get all these numbers right. At the end of the day, my other hitch probably didn't have as much setup going on, but the dealer did it and they did it within about 30 minutes. And I'm sure they did a good job, but I already know just from what I've seen that it wasn't aligned perfect and I didn't really know any better. It wasn't bad, it was pretty good. It just wasn't as good as it could have been. We're gonna go ahead and jack this up. And there are bars that come with this. I've been kind of, kind of lazy, I'm kind of tired today. And uh, I've been lifting the, 
lifting the truck kind of scared me. That was just a wrench that was leaning up against there. Um, so we can slide the bars on and that's the other thing. You would not want to do that with a hand crank jack. You'd be really tired and you might not even be able to do that. Uh, this bulldog is rated for 4,000 pounds. So it's, you know, four times more weight than I'd ever have on the tongue. Of course, we are picking a little bit up on the truck. So if you just added another thousand pounds in, we're still at half the capacity of this jack. You just go in there like that and pop down, super simple. Now we're gonna let this back down. And these things are gonna be flat. You wanna make sure that these things are flat here and you don't have something like digging at an angle because that would mean you need to make adjustments here or up in the, in the hitch itself. Um, and that's the reason why you only hand tighten these, I guess. So I'm going to probably snug these down now and, and get them tight. But then I'm, I think I'm going to take the weight off again just and, and just do them one more time to make sure because, you know, they're under a lot of load right now. Oh, man, it's finally time. We got everybody loaded into the truck and we got one more passenger we're waiting on, as always. <laughs> Shut it. <laughs> and so um, Ashton's the navigator and he's got everything plotted out from here all the way to Texas. Or wherever we're going, right? Wait, what? <laughs> um, we finally got everything done and didn't get any like recording or loading. It was just crazy trying to get everything in. Um, we're so stressed out because we got limited time. So we're going to go ahead and hit the road. And we're going to have to adjust our mirrors and a few other things and get ourselves ready to go here. Oh, we go. All right. So we did a little truck cleaning and bumped a few things, but I think we're looking pretty good there. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray for a good trip. We thank you so much for the uh, blessings to be able to take this trip. We pray for our house to be safe while we're away. And uh, we just pray that you just look upon our family and uh, protect us. Give us just safe passage where we're going. Lord, we know that it's in our hearts to plan our way, but that you, Lord, establish each of our steps. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Lord, we, uh, we ask that angels fly with us wherever we roam and guide us back safely to family and home. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Before we leave town, we gotta do this, cat scale. We're gonna find out what our numbers are. Ooh, not too bad, not too bad. We only went up 100 pounds from last year. <laughs> We're at 16,300, our steer axle's at 4760, drive axle's at 5460, and trailer axle is at 6080. So we're doing pretty good right there because our gross on that is 7200. So we're sitting pretty good. Well, 1230 in the morning, we made it to Missouri, just over the border, what, 20 miles, 30 miles, something like that from Iowa. So we don't normally do this, but because uh, driving at night is not very smart. We seen probably 20 plus deer, but it was one of those things where you, you calculate your risk. And the risk in this case was the deer the risk tomorrow was a guaranteed snowstorm, and since the likelihood of hitting a deer is actually pretty low, had to go with the deer, and uh, we hit some miles out. So that puts us really far ahead of the game, but it has been a long day. I will say though, the Walmart here in uh, Bethany, Missouri, like all the others across the country, are absolutely amazing. It's the only positive that I've come across in COVID is that if you, boondocked in a Walmart like we did when we started out in 2019. They were busy all night, people coming and going. Not anymore. So they are super quiet. And I know it probably won't always last, but I'm kind of uh, kind of thinking maybe it, they'll be staying closed for a while. We'll see. 
because uh, they were already starting to go non-24 hours by us in Wisconsin, so. It's gonna be great sleeping tonight. We just gotta get some propane on. My thoughts on the hitch are pretty good. One thing I definitely did notice over the Husky that was like the chain style, so it was like, it was just weight distribution, but no sway. It was super windy today. We had a storm and all kinds of other stuff um, that we went through. And I, I felt probably the most sway I call it sway, but the most sway per se. Uh, and my theory behind that is the trailer would be back there doing all this back and forth stuff. And with the sway control now, it's not doing that as much, but it's because the truck is stopping it. So now in the truck, I'm feeling it a little bit more. Um, so we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, in the next video. My brain is just so tired tonight, but we are on the road and we are halfway across the country so time to lock up the truck and the unit and get some heat going security cameras all the way around the unit do make me feel pretty good staying in any kind of parking lot well the lighting is probably pretty bad in here but we decided to leave the slide out in tonight since we're in the middle of the parking lot and uh, also make it easier to heat less space one of the many projects that we did was adding in all these usb chargers all over i've got several of them so i can plug in and charge lights and camera batteries cell phones all that off the battery you can never have enough usbs on the 12 volt uh, i've never been so comfortable in a walmart parking lot it's actually not too bad we're pretty pretty level tonight it's one o'clock in the morning so we're gonna go ahead and end this one here i definitely look forward to the next video that we'll be getting out where we'll be continuing on our journey yeah, I mean, it'd be pretty good. Just get ahead of this storm, stay away from it. It's kind of coming from the northwest down, so we're just going to do what we can to keep the hell out of its path. Thanks for following us along on this crazy journey. I don't think I've ever ended a video in all the years I've been doing stuff on YouTube and Twitch, laying down just about to pass out, so it's kind of crazy, but... Okay, that was too weird. I had to sit up, but until uh, next time... Take care, and since this is a driving video, I guess we'll say keep her between the mustard and the mayo.